Okay, and now we will move on to covering one of my favorite inputs in the Unreal Engine hair shader is pixel depth offset. What it does is it feeds off your height map. Anytime your hair cards intersect, it pretty much gets rid of them by blending the height map channels and instead of it looking like two hair cards intersecting harshly at the seam, what it will do it is whenever it detects an intersection, it'll grab the height map values from the intersected parts and it'll render whatever has a higher height value on top of the intersected card and whatever has a lower height value goes underneath. And what happens is instead of it having a very harsh hair card intersection, and we've all seen how ugly those look, it'll actually look like the hairs are instead weaving in and out of each other. So if we look at our hair card wig right here, let me see if I could find a good intersection point. Okay, you can barely see it on camera, but there is a hair card intersection right here on a diagonal, and you really have to pay attention to find it. So you can see all these hairs, they're from separate hair cards, they're weaving in and out of each other uh, as though they're actual hairs. Parts of these are intersecting hair cards, and it just looks like the hairs are going, weaving in and out right through each other like they're interlocked. And that's why I love pixel depth offset. And what's cool is all that you need is a height map. So you do not need the Herdini system for this specifically. I have a hard time finding the intersections. You can see a slight intersection right here. You can see these hairs on top are intersecting, but they're going through the hairs on the bottom card. And you know, worst case scenario, it just looks like you have a short hair that's cut off. All right, and let's show you how this works and dissect it. You start off right here and you start off with your height map. You know, you add a power node or a clamp node or multiply or something to control your levels just so you have good instant feedback. And then what we have to do is, as you know, black and white alpha maps like, you know, the height and roughness, they all are in zero to one space with zero being black, one being white. Uh, the pixel depth offset is in negative one to one space. So we need to convert this from zero to one space to negative one to one space. So uh, in a sense, whatever is zero on your height map will become negative one. And whatever is 0.5 or middle gray on your height map will become zero. So what we do to get started is you plug in your height map into a one minus node that in effect inverts your height map. So if I could just do a preview. All right, so that's our height map or depth map. We do a one minus node, start previewing that and it gets inverted. After the inversion, you add negative 0.5 to it. And what this does is it pretty much that converts it to negative one to one space. Actually, I should say it's in negative 0.5 to 0.5 space. Uh, and then you multiply it by, by default value of two and that'll bring you into negative one to one space. However, you can actually increase this value right here. Uh, you're just multiplying it by two to start off with and see if you like it. But you can crank this up very high and you'll get hairs that are that can be pushed down or pushed up to avoid the intersection look. All right, and so you can go very strong here and crank this up to a very high value such as 12. And you see how crazy that is. So all these will be pushed all the way down. The higher the value is, uh, the more it comes up. And luckily these do not get clamped really. Uh, uh, so you can just push this uh, as far as you want. Like I still see a difference even at insane values like 12, even though that's gone beyond the negative one to one space. It's as simple as feeding that multiply node into the pixel depth offset. So not only is it a great effect, it's actually very simple to put together. It's just height map, one minus node. You feed that one minus node into an add. You add negative 0.5. Then you multiply it by a float value of your choosing. You can start off with two and that'll bring you into a default of negative one to one space. And then you just feed that into your pixel depth offset. All right, and here's an intersection, another intersection right here. It looks very subtle. In fact, you kind of have a hard time seeing it even though you're pretty much very up close to it. You know, if you're making a game character, if you're that far away, there's pretty much no way to tell. So not to say you should be sloppy with your hair cards, but it's not the end of the world if they intersect. So that's the great thing about making procedural hair card systems. You don't have to necessarily worry about that anymore. All right, and just for fun, I wanna turn this off just to show you a before and after. So let me unhook the pixel depth offset and you will see how hideous this looks without it. Ugh! See how ugly that is? Oh my God. Uh, that, you know, that's gonna get you. You can't let anyone see this. 
But yeah, like what a drastic difference that makes. So that is a very awesome, awesome feature. I wish other 3D packages had that. And right now I have it cranked up all the way to a crazy value. I do wanna crank it up even more just to show you something that you have to watch out for. If you crank this up too high to an insane value, you will start to see bald spots in your character's scalp. And that's because uh, the hair cards do intersect with your character's scalp. Obviously that's where hair comes from. It comes from a scalp. It's liable to have the hair card actually not be rendered because the height value is beneath the value of the skin on the scalp. All right, and you can start to see it right here. Yeah, so. This is what happens when your pixel depth offset value is too high. You'll start to see bald spots because, again, uh, these hair cards are intersecting. The height value is beneath the height value of the scalp because you're going into a negative height value with the pixel depth offset. And, it, and you can see that disappear because this height value is farther away from the scalp. And you see these ugly spots here because we have an insane value hooked into the pixel depth offset. So you would never bring, crank it up this high right now. And you do have to be careful and do, you usually do want to stop around, I would say, no more than four. But it's going to depend on what your scalp is. I actually have on this scalp right here, I do have a lot of space in between the hair cards and the actual hair, just so the pixel depth offset looks a little bit better. But you do want to get into the habit of actually painting a hair scalp onto the skin of your character mesh, or at, at the very least painting a solid hair color where the hair would be. Uh, that way, in case you need to do a crazy high pixel depth offset value, you do not get bald spots. You will just see the hair that's painted onto your character's flesh. All right, and so we lowered this down to a value of four for the multiplication strength, and you can still see it's still kind of weak uh, right there because we're still seeing some intersections a tiny bit. It doesn't look bad, but it's still present. It looks like the hair is cut off short, uh, but again, we, we can just crank this up to an even higher value like I had it on 12 before. So this particular model, uh, because I put space in between the scalp and the hair cards, it can take a higher pixel depth offset value. And right there, pretty much those intersections went away. But again, always get in the habit of painting hair on the scalp so you can get away with cranking the strength value up as high as you need. And also, some people like to do this for the pixel depth offset. I know I did. I said I did not like dithering uh, before in the edge mask sample, but it actually looks kind of pleasant in the pixel depth offset because you're not using opacity, you're using a height map. So pretty much whenever this dithers, it's surrounded by other hair strands and it kind of camouflages the dither, dithering artifacts. And it does give a smoother transition. So if you want to use dither, there are way more complex shaders that you go through a whole algorithm of nodes to create a specific pattern for hair. But if you want to keep things simple, again, just put in a dither temporal AA node. By default, the alpha threshold is 0.5. And I would not put in an opacity mask in it this time. You would usually do that for the edge masking, but it looks better with uh, the pixel depth offset if you just leave it as is, and that'll just pretty much dither some uh, opacity at a 0.5 value by default, or you can plug in, you can one left click a float value and plug in something of your choosing if you wanna adjust it. So it's by default, it's at 0.5. Again, the random value is it just randomly makes a noise pattern if you want. So that'll give you some random noise. If you don't like the random noise, you just hit this at zero. So you get, you get your dither temporal AA node, you plug it into an add node, and then you add it to your one minus node, and then you feed this add node into the other add node that is at negative 0.5 and converts everything to negative one to one space. And so that is how you do dithering if you wish to use it. It actually does look pleasant in this case. I know I said I did not like it before, but again, the surrounding hair camouflages any artifacts. However, you will have to worry about the edges of your hair cards, especially the tips, because those do not have surrounding hair to camouflage. All right, and so here is a quick sample of what dithering looks like. Keep in mind, uh, you are more likely to get bald spots with dithering. It makes the pixel depth offset a little bit more powerful. You'll see that you will have to generally lower your strength parameter, but it does give a pleasant smoothing effect, I feel. Uh, you will have to obviously, again, paint a scalp onto your character's skin if you use pixel depth offset, especially with dithering. But we could still lower the strength value to see if we can get a better result. So we will lower this to, let's say, a value of four. 
Uh, when I used four before the dithering, uh, I did notice some intersections, but let's see what it looks like with dithering on. All right, and we still see some balding and artifacts here, so we may have to lessen this even more. However, you can still see that the intersections are very smooth and quite pleasant looking. I have a hard time finding them, actually, even when I'm this close to the character's wig. However, unfortunately, again, you still have to worry about artifacts at the tips and edges of the hair. You can see some in this shot right here. But yeah, so this is one example I would consider using dithering in and just worry about masking the edges off with the UV mask trick in Herdini or just playing around with the parameters. But let's try a quick mask to try to clean up the tips of the hair and we will use our UV masking trick made possible by Herdini. If you do not have Herdini, you would have to figure out a way to mask out the edges of your hair cards somehow, but let's give this a shot within Herdini. All right, so we will put down a texture coordinate node and we will put down a component mask and mask out the green channel. All right, and we will preview this node and once again, you see the black part uh, of the mask is at the roots or the top, so we need to invert this once again, so we will apply a one minus node. All right, and now we have our tips masked out, so we can multiply this by the dithering. All right, and now that we can preview a multiply node, and now you see that the tips and the dithering noise is masked out at where the tips would be, and so that should take care of our artifacts at the tips. All right, and let's see if this works any better. All right, and now that looks much better. I am noticing less artifacts on the tips. However, I do want to increase the pixel depth offset strength because we lost some with the gradient mask that we just applied. All right, so I will bring this up to three and let's see how that looks. All right, now that it's set at three with dithering, this does look a little bit smoother to me. So you'll always have to do a dance with the parameter settings with this. All right, and again, paint on a scalp so you do not get bald spots. However, if you have Herdini, you could probably just mask the roots out and even go as far as the edges out and just adjust the settings with a power node and clamp node to control the levels. And this way you should get clean edges that way as well. All right, and so that's how pixel depth offset looks. And once again, let's review what we did. So you get your height map and you put it into a one minus node, then you add negative 0.5, and then you multiply it by a float value uh, defaulting at two and adjust that to your taste. You put that into a multiply node and you send that on over to the pixel depth offset input. And it looks like we are done going over all of these mask values. And that concludes the entire Unreal Engine hair shader tutorial series. And if you'd like to get Herdini on my Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash Cinema and some of the features Herdini has versus the built-in Houdini hair generator node are mainly that it is bake free since it uses a substance designer material instead of rendering out maps. So you do not have to wait for texture sheets to bake. Herdini also includes flow maps to give each hair individuality and their own specular highlight. And Herdini has built-in pivot painter support. Herdini also has its UVs on a full UV tile per hair card to make the most out of your resolution, as well as allowing for quick masking features in Unreal Engine, so you can quickly and easily mask out the sides, tops and bottoms, roots and tips of each hair card, as you will see me doing so in the tutorial. So once again, you can find Herdini on my Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash cinema. I also have several other products such as as game rigging in Houdini, learn how to animate and rig characters in Houdini and send them over to Unreal Engine. And I also have a few substance designer materials and models. And if you like this tutorial, please follow me on ArtStation, on Gumroad, or on YouTube. And let me know if there is a particular product or tutorial that you are looking for. I have several projects upcoming and on deck, some of which are most likely going to be game-friendly destruction tutorial in Houdini. And that would cover such things that most people have trouble with, such as 
directing a destruction animation and bringing that into Unreal while still having game collision enabled. Quite a tricky subject a lot of people have. Or if you have trouble getting the material fracture node to actually fracture, I will cover that. And another possible tutorial product I was thinking of doing was a procedural substance designer particle system. So you do not have to bake an 8x8 grid mosaic texture sheet for particles in Unreal Engine. You could just bring in a substance, pick a pattern, and make changes directly within the substance without going through the trouble of doing simulations or baking out a texture sheet. All right, and so if you can, let me know your thoughts on those, or if you have any other suggestions, let me know. Once again, please follow me for updates on those on artstation.com slash cinema, gumroad.com slash cinema. And thanks again for watching.